Yoga is the practice of healing the mind, the body, and the spirit. We will be heading to a yoga studio here in England called Iyengar Studios, where I caught up with a good friend of mine, Victoria Bridges, where I asked her various questions about the specific practice of Iyengar and a little history about the Iyengar family and how they changed the face of yoga forever. My name is Victoria Bridges. I'm an Iyengar yoga teacher. I first was introduced to yoga when I was working in the television industry and I was told I was going to go to Nepal. It was a very stressful time for me in my career. I found the TV industry to be very high pressure. I felt a high um, need to perform at my best possible abilities all the time because I was a freelancer and every job depended on how I did the last job. So uh, when I went to join a gym uh, in advance of a trip I was going to make, a filming trip, I thought I was just going to get fit. But at that gym there was Iyengar Yoga on offer. And the first time I did that class, I thought I had come home. It just felt so relaxing and freeing and liberating. It felt like I could stretch and strengthen my body simultaneously. And immediately it helped me in the workplace. I felt more grounded. I felt less affected by other people's opinions and less affected by my own opinions about myself. I put less pressure on myself, basically. So yoga, I found, immediately helped me deal with the stresses of life, which everyone has, I believe. Uh, it took me a while to realize I wanted to become an Iyengar yoga teacher. I did the training in the year 1999. I've been teaching for nearly 20 years now. And I find it endlessly exciting. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn in yoga, both about my own body, about my mind, and I'm most grateful to my students. What we call Iyengar Yoga is a system of yoga based on the teaching of VKS Iyengar, who sadly died a few years ago. He was an extraordinary man. He discovered yoga in his youth. He was a very sickly child, was unable to do pretty much anything. He was, uh, had malaria, tuberculosis, was a very weak child, constantly prone to all sorts of disease. Uh, but he was introduced to yoga by his teacher, Krishnamacharya, who was in fact his brother-in-law, who was a hard taskmaster, master, and pretty soon Mr. Iyengar found his, his body to have become strong. He became a yoga teacher before anyone was thinking of doing such a thing, and he brought Iyengar yoga to the West. His particular brand of yoga focuses on... Uh, alignment in the posture. He believes that through putting the body into very precise positions we are learning how to quieten the mind. We're working the body equally on both sides and uh, we're not uh, going simply into a comfort zone in the posture. We're working with our limitations and at the edge of our restrictions uh, to progress. So there's an aspiration to move beyond and, uh, our current limitations, both physical and mental. And of course, the physical postures have uh, a very profound effect on our mental state. It brings confidence as we do the poses. The simple act of broadening across the collarbones, moving the shoulder bone, shoulder blades into the back of the body uh, and, and lifting the sternum helps, for instance, us to feel confident, for us to feel we can deal with the ups and downs of life. In every single pose, there's a teaching that we can translate into our daily lives. And this is what I find so powerful about yoga in general. Uh, Iyengar yoga itself deals a lot with, uses a lot of props to help people who have more stiffness or who have weakness or who are sick 
to be in the classical poses in a safe way. They can then build gradually by getting rid of that equipment towards the classical pose. So, uh, Mr. Iyengar has brought many things to yoga in the West. He's been one of the most influential teachers we have, and he's helped millions worldwide. BKS Iyengar pioneered the use of props in the pose, foam blocks, a belt, a chair, to help those with more restrictedness in their body, with stiffness, those who were weak, those who were ill, to be in the pose in a way that was helpful to them, uh, in, to be in the classical pose and to work towards the classical pose by using the equipment and then slowly taking the equipment away so that that person very gradually perhaps over time can work towards the full classical pose. It could be that they stay in the pose with all the equipment indefinitely. That pose is still beneficial to that person. It soothes the nervous system, it helps them stretch parts of the body they're normally not stretching, twisting or strengthening. I think it's very important to remember that yoga, the practice we know as yoga, is often thought of as just asana, the physical postures. But it is important to remember that yoga is based on, as potentially wrote, eight different limbs of yoga. They are the yamas and the niyamas, the ethical precepts, how we deal with others and how we are internally towards ourselves. Asana, the postures, that's just one of the eight limbs. Pranayama, breath control. And at this stage, the attention is starting to turn inwards, to the effect of the poses on our body. Pratyahara, which is where the senses turn inwards away from their sense objects, so rather than being drawn and attracted to the things that we see with our eyes or hear with our ears, we quiet in the mind and listen to our own internal wisdom in Pratyahara. This is a practice that we often encourage our students to undertake in the poses and it's especially learnt in the last most important pose that we always do in a yoga class, Shavasana, corpse pose. Uh, beyond that there are three further levels, Dharana, concentration, Dhyana, meditation. Ultimately the whole practice, all the eight limbs come together with Samadhi the final level of complete oneness, a sense of bliss and a sense of contentment. Yoga is for everyone. It may be based in Sanskrit, in a tradition, in a Hindu tradition, a religious tradition, but it is adaptable to any person, whatever your body type, whatever age you are. Whatever issues you feel you're dealing with, you can bring them to an Iyenga yoga class, to most yoga classes, and you will be helped. It is about finding the right teacher for you. In Iyenga yoga, we're very, very careful. We're trained to think about people's issues and to work with alignment and accuracy in the poses to help people overcome any imbalances they have. Yoga is for everyone. I would recommend to everyone, whatever your body type, whatever your age, start a class, come and see how it works for you. We're all different. There are many different types of yoga teachers out there. Iyengar yoga may not suit you. Try different teachers from different uh, backgrounds. But also, even if you decide you quite enjoy Iyengar yoga, for instance, all of us teachers, while we're all trained in the same way, are different. We bring different things to the classes depending on what we found useful. So I would suggest you try a variety of different classes and teachers when you're starting out, but do have a go. Um, I also feel that if you are a parent of a child, children love trying the postures out. Have a look online, find some yoga postures and give it a go. Do a dog pose with your kid. Help them to learn the joy of having a go at a balance on one leg. You could call Ardha Chandrasana where we 
take the arms out and lift one leg up, you, which is known as half moon pose in Iyengar yoga, uh, Ardha Chandrasana. We, uh, you could call that aeroplane pose. Have a go, have fun, give names to the poses and mess around a bit. Children love yoga and if you start them out by practicing some of these poses playfully, you might be giving them a gift for life. I consider it a real privilege to be a yoga teacher. Every time I come to teach a class, I feel grateful. I feel grateful to my students. I learn from my students every class I teach. And I feel grateful to the Iyengas for training me, for training my teachers and therefore training me in such a careful, kind and compassionate way to learn postures that I can pass on and help others learn. Uh, I'm just a guide. The teaching comes through me. Uh, I'm extremely grateful.